Well, Apple is not officially at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas this week, but the company is still catching the eye of a lot of attendees, not for a new product, but for a huge billboard that takes aim at rivals like Google, Amazon, and Facebook over privacy and security. The ad reads, what happens on your iPhone if your iPhone stays on your phone, if the information on your iPhone stays on your phone? So does Apple take its privacy measures too far, like refusing FBI requests to unlock the iPhone used by the gunman in the 2015 San Bernardino terrorist attack? Let's ask Michael Balboni. He's formerly with the New York Homeland Security. And Michael, is Apple putting privacy concerns ahead of public safety? They have built their brand on privacy. They've built their brand on the fact that you can use this system and always be secure. Of course, if there are cases where you know someone is uh, a drug dealer, someone is uh, planning a murder, that, that, or you, you catch a phone. I've worked with police agencies who are so frustrated they can't get into a phone to find out perhaps the, the whereabouts of a missing child. Now, there are ways where you can make requests to get that, but they are so locked down. Of course, the San Bernardino case in California where they had a terrorist event and they wanted to check the phones of the individuals who committed the, the acts, they couldn't get into them. And there was this whole big legal battle. They eventually found they, it they, on their own. Exactly. So when you have this corporate policy, Tim Cook says, you know, it's the data industrial complex. We must provide privacy. It is everybody's right for privacy. That is his brand, and that's what he's going to continue to push. Well, uh, uh, Jonathan Honig, thanks for being with us. So are you going to tell me that if, if there's a, evidence of a serious crime committed, that a court or a, a police officer or a law enforcement cannot go get a warrant to break in and evaluate a potential suspect's phone? Is, is Apple really taking it that far? So here, here's the problem. You make an arrest of an individual, and they have a phone on them. They've they, they committed a crime. I'm sorry, they've been accused of committing a crime. And now you want to get into their phone and see who have they contacted? Who are they talking to? You don't have the ability necessarily to get a warrant on that particular phone, in addition to which the, there might be exigent circumstances, you can't get to it. You can make those requests, but Apple has been very, very tough in, um, in not allowing law enforcement to get into those phones. Michael, we've heard so much about um, uh, uh, GDPR, excuse me, right. the privacy regulations in Europe, and I know that there's a, a proposed law in California that's very similar, mm -hmm. and I think that there's a lot of tech companies that are sort of preparing and anticipating at least right. some version of that. How does all of this regulation privacy regulation in Europe and what's being proposed in California, how does all of that play into what you're talking about? So, so it's fascinating because it actually then brings into account Facebook. You know, uh, one right. of the things that, that Facebook is doing right now is, is they, are, they are going through the posts, they're scanning posts of individuals, and they're seeing when that there's a risk of, of suicide. And then they're taking the information in some instances and giving it to police saying, go talk to this individual and do a check to see whether or not they're truly at risk. Mm -hmm. That raises all sorts of huge questions. There's no permission to do that. There's no awareness to do that. And the question really becomes, it's health information. So we have, we have HIPAA, and yet HIPAA doesn't apply. So GDPR, the right to be forgotten, now is going to apply to a whole bunch of ways that we Americans don't normally accept uh, uh, controls on. Hmm. Um, if I can just ask you one question about third-party apps, that seems to me the major issue. Once you have people buying these third-party apps from the Apple iTunes store, I feel like that privacy argument just goes out the window. What do you think? Well, you know, it's, it's amazing because of what Americans put on the, the net themselves. I've always said, you know, we're so concerned when WikiLeaks happened and we had all this government in, um, involvement with our data. We were all concerned about the government having it. And we will put stuff on the net. Well, you know, Google Earth, we, we know exactly what's going on in our backyards. And so it seems that that's okay, but as soon as government gets involved, nobody wants to, to have it. I think GDPR is changing that dynamic. A lot of things that Facebook wants to do in Europe, they've said, no, you can't do that. And I think that's really where the debate is going to continue to go. People are beginning to wake up to the fact that their data may not be safe. That's the other aspect of it. it may be manipulated, may be hacked. And at the same time, what is actually out there on the net when they put it out there? Michael, it's very easy for us to discuss these problems mm -hmm. and possible solutions uh, without any kind of terrorist attack right here, right now. But isn't it possible that if there is, God forbid, another terrorist attack of some kind, particularly on the infrastructure, something yeah. that you look at all the time, 
that that changes the whole dynamic and and what is considered a, a total privacy matter now becomes a big public security matter, matter later. It absolutely does, and it ra ratchets up the pressure for any of these companies to, to basically relax their privacy requirements and let people get into the information they need. But then there's another much more sinister aspect to this, and that is the weaponization of social media. Mm. That is where you take apps like WhatsApp. WhatsApp has been utilized in, um, in India in a way that where it actually caused the death of several individuals as a result of misinformation. There have been incidents in Brazil. So the, the content is also a part of the problem. You know, it, it, here's a staggering statistic. By 2020, there will be 6 billion smartphone users and 3 billion social network users. Yeah. The, 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 this is growing staggering. so prolifically. We've yeah. never even thought about this. Yeah.